I feel good today. So you know what? I'm going to go on Metacritic and just read some reviews when it comes to Rise of the Ronin. I want to see how people react. I want to see how they feel toward the game. I sure hope <laughs> I don't see anything toxic because remember this is a PS5 exclusive and unfortunately console walls are a thing. So yeah. This is going to be a very different video and well, wish me luck. I, I really hope I don't get triggered. Let's go. The very first comment is from Slenia and the person says this game has some really good combat. It doesn't quite meet the highs of Neo 2. Okay, so right off the bat, um, I play Neo 1 and 2 and even though I'm only level 250 in both games, I think, I can tell you that Neo, when it comes to combat, has more depth. But when it comes to the possibilities, you know, and how fun and engaging the combat is, I think I'm going to side with Ronin when it comes to how dynamic the fight could the fights could be. When it comes to, again, when it comes to all the possibilities, when it comes to um, your, your gear, your weapons, your techniques, your, the builds, especially the builds you can make, I think Neo is superior. But when it comes to raw combat, when it comes to, you know, when it gets down to business, I think Rise of the Ronin has the edge. Now, that person says um, it comes close, okay, but that's definitely worth praise. Where it fails is in basically every other aspect. The story is nearly impossible to follow. I don't agree. Though I can I can see why that person can feel like the story is impossible to follow because you just keep switching sides and it's quite a long story. You know, I feel like the game would have had um, a better reaction from people if it was shorter, like maybe 30% to 40% shorter because it's quite a long story and you just keep going back and forth when it comes to your factory of fractions, to your factions. So I can I can understand why. I mean, you can tell this review is written by someone who played the game because I can, I can understand the confusion. So impossible to follow to the point where you are best served opening Wikipedia <laughs> articles of various characters to get what story they are attempting to tell. I can I can agree. To a certain degree, I can agree. The open world is completely uninteresting uh, to the point where it doesn't compare favorably to ancient games like Dragons. Why 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 are we trying to compare games here? That's the, I think that's a real problem with gaming nowadays, that we're always trying to bring one game down. I recently made a poll about Ghost of Tsushima, you know, and even though I was trying to, to center the discussion on Ghost of Tsushima, people were still bringing other games as Sekiro and Rise of the Ronin or Neo 2. I, you know, I understand, you know, but to a certain degree, we are not doing any good to those games by trying to break them down or going or having them go against each other. You know, we can appreciate both games, I mean, multiple games without having to drag them down. I just don't understand. But anyway, the cosmetic options are also fairly lackluster. I, I, <laughs> it's very difficult to, you know. The good thing is I'm open-minded, so I can go through that without getting triggered because I can understand that someone else might have a different opinion. So, uh, the cosmetic options are also fairly lackluster, but you could reasonably forgive it for wanting to stick mostly to what would have been worn in that time period, okay? So, more Yukuta design wouldn't have gone amiss at the very least. It also doesn't look that great. Okay, though it's certainly, it's certainly possible. This is a combat game first and foremost. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. If that's the kind of gamer you are, this is a must buy. If you want a whole package of me, I will wait for a deep sale. So overall, a 6. I can understand that that person had a good experience with the game, but um, mostly when it comes to combat. But everything else is was not appealing. I can understand why it's fair. It's a fair criticism. Now we have Bentley Boy 98. Whenever you see a name like that, you know you you in for a treat. Graphics are terrible. Combat is clunky as mm, 
story uh, lots of repetitive missions avoid this garbage at all cost okay bentley what game did you play graphics are ter terrible is a strong word you know i played golem you know lords of the rings golem and i think that game might be the ugliest, the ugliest game i played in the last 10 years graphics were actually terrible for that game now we're using the same adjective terrible when it comes to rise of the ronin i don't agree i don't i highly disagree another person is saying that the combat is clunky in what as like what aspect of the combat is actually clunky because in my experience and i have 130 hours in the game i don't think the combat is clunky i think it takes some getting used to the same way Sekiro or even Sifu would. You know, it's not it's, it's a it's a game where you perform parries, and the problem is, it's not it's not the timing of the parries. I think the problem with the game is you have way too many animations for enemies. You know, you have over forty plus bosses. You know, and you have to count in the normal enemies, and sometimes when you want to perform a counter you just don't know when it is the proper time to perform the parry that's the problem it's not, it has nothing to do with the timing it has everything to do with us not being accustomed to the animation that the moment you spend some time at the dojo just trying maybe just trying to get better maybe just trying to solidify a bond with the character or you just want the, the gear or like whatever the case might be when you spend time with the game and you, and you understand its mechanics, you get familiar with the way the game behaves, there is no way you can tell me that the game, the combat is clunky because that's not the case. The hitboxes are fine, everything works perfectly. I don't understand. And the story is as <laughs> everything else is bad. Lots of repetitive missions. Tell me one game which does not have repetitive missions. One game. I dare you. I double dare you. Mother. Okay. One game. Yeah, this is a sandbox type of experience at the end of the day. But you don't have to do those things. You know, if you don't want to, don't go fetch the cats. Don't go looking for shrines. Don't go. Um, I don't know. Like, what game is not repetitive? Every single game is repetitive. Tell me one game where you don't do the same thing over and over, especially in an open world. That's almost impossible because how do you keep people interested in such a big environment? That's just not possible. So anyway, oh, big flow. Unfortunately, the game visuals are poor, especially for uh, 80 hero. Oh, that person is in uh, France, probably. Triple A, uh, PS5 exclusive. That's the thing. That's the thing. Whatever people say, people see 80, I mean, $70 for a game, they're expecting $70 when it comes to quality and performance. And that's being delusional. <laughs> I gotta be honest, because with every game I found, I found, I found it the same. You have to, yeah, you have so many factors which affect the, the way a game might I'll say be be produced that it's a bit unfair to just put all those games on the same level and just judge them let's say for example a game has 200 million dollars as a budget and I think it was the case for the Callisto protocol and you can tell this game looks amazing I've said a lot of bad things <laughs> when it comes to Callisto but there's one thing you can't take away from this game it looks damn good but that's where it stops this that's where the praise is for the game stops because everything else is eh. see because they made some sacrifices now i don't know what the budget for rise of the Ronin is but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not even half of that and when you see that rise of the run on <laughs> rise of the Ronin, in my opinion is a better package than Callisto. You can't judge games for their prices, you know. You have some good experiences and you have some bad ones. I have a hundred hours in, in one game, and let's take for example a game like Spider-Man. I personally think, you know, I I had better value when it comes to rolling than Spider-Man. But one game looks better than the other, one game performs even better, you know, but again, 
the price and it doesn't tell the whole story you know just because it's a $60 or $17 game doesn't mean that it's going to perform like The Last of Us Part 2 or I don't know you know Alan Wake 2 it's <sighs> anyway the game is repetitive useless uh, OW what do you mean no RP very poor writing all quests have the same design the only interest is to fight you was you spend you spend some time talking about all the negative aspects of the game but you don't want to elaborate on the combat which is good okay <laughs> that feels that feels quite disingenuous okay why is it not a simple souls -like? oh there you go there you go that person wanted dark souls 4 and got to play rise of the ronin and now they're mad okay i see i see how it is i see how it is <laughs> We have K K Shoe Dio. People shade on the graphics, but I think it's not so bad. People get me wrong. Don't I mean don't get me wrong. It's it is very far from next gen. What is next gen? That's the thing. What is next gen? In my opinion, the jump from PS4 to PS5 has more to do with performance than graphics. Because when you take games like Ghost of Tsushima, they looked amazing on PS4. Same applies to Last of Us Part 2. They look amazing on PS on PS4. And if you even play Last of Us uh, Part 2 on PS5, you're going to see there's not much difference when it comes to the way the game looks. But everything is different when we talk about performance because the game is games nowadays tend to aim for 60 FPS as opposed to 30 FPS. And people need to realize that the jump from old gen to next gen it has to do with performance we are not yet to the point where we can make uh, amazing looking games at 60 fps or 120 it's not the case yet maybe in the future when the ps5 pro releases or px ps ps6 but we we are not having this discussion right now this is not a next gen game and tell me about one game which surely felt like a next gen game one game out there eternal is because I'm pretty sure that if I play Return on my PS4, it's going to sound like a jet engine. <laughs> it's going to sound like a jet engine. So, yeah, this next gen is uh, I don't know, man. Anyway, whew. at least I'm not getting triggered. The reason for my score, that guy, that that person gave it a six. The reason for my score is that I think the interaction between characters are not very good. The game wants you to like certain characters, but it just doesn't work for me. I don't feel the chemistry, okay? I can I can relate to that. Faces are good, but the facial expressions are non-existent. I encountered only a few bugs. In my experience, I encountered no bugs at all. That's good. The story for me is made in a way that I didn't feel too much connected to the protagonist who was looking for the Blade Twin. I also feel like the whole Blade Twin storyline is... I don't know, it doesn't work too well. I feel like it was they could have done it without the blade twin, but that's just me. Even though they are messing with us the whole time. One of the endings is very lame <laughs> and idealistic. We as a protagonist keep messing with all the other characters regardless of this side and they will trust us for some reason. <laughs> okay, that, that feels reasonable. That's a reasonable critic. Um, <laughs> protagonist is the worst character, really. <laughs> this is not a bad game, but it is it isn't it isn't worth the full price. But then, which game is Elden Ring? That's it. Come on, I had a harsh review on Ghost of Tsushima, too. But after all this time and after Rise of the Ronin, I think why are you bringing Rise? I mean, why are you talking about Ghost of Tsushima? Like. I don't know. You are harsh too. I, like, what? What are, you, what are you trying to say? That you are like you trying to be different? Like you didn't like the big game everybody liked? Come on, like, come on. <laughs> Why are you trying to be different? Anyway, my prime w double double zero eighty six. The stupid AI really disappointed me. Huh? The graphics were terrible and the characters were not interesting. The stupid AI really disappointed me. Are they talking about the aid? I mean, the, the the allies? Because you know, whenever you are going on a mission where you have fire, 
you know, when the, maybe maybe the town is on fire or the castle or the, the place you want to you, you want to head toward is on fire, your ally tend to be very dumb. I can I can but I wish they they um explain what they made what they what they um you can give zero and don't go in depth when it comes to I mean your experience. I feel like it's it's not fair. But if it, if it has to do with the AI and you know, your your allies, I can agree to some capacity that the AI is kind of stupid, especially when you have walls. They will tend to just be locked in place and won't be able to progress unless you pick them. You know, you actually have to take control and do the thing by your. I mean, I mean, go where you want to go by yourself, which is it, it breaks the purpose of having allies controlled by AI. So I can understand that. And but the graphics being terrible and the characters not being interesting. I mean, I, ah, anyway. Low, low, bad graphics and interesting storylines. Battles are not bad, but there's nothing so special about even that, in a word, huh? It wasn't interesting. Huh? Basically, bad graphics. I feel like most people only judge a game by how good it looks. I feel like graphics for most people is like 70% of what makes a game fun, which is sad. It, it's truly sad, but because in my experience, I would say the story and especially the gameplay, the gameplay is like 50% and then you have performance because I can't enjoy a game I can't play, right? It's like 80% and then if a game looks good, that's the cherry on top, but I'm not going to this again just because it doesn't look, it doesn't look like Ghost of Tsushima, it doesn't look like um, Elden Ring or I don't know, I feel like you have to appreciate a game for what it's trying to be. And as long as you just judge a game based on your past experiences, I think I feel I feel like I understand, right? But you can't play Rise of the Ruling expecting Ghost of Tsushima. That's not fair. That's really not fair. Okay, one more one more review. Shovelware Journey 69. What a name. Shovelware bland and boring Sekiro Repath. Stay away from this pile of garbage as far as as far as possible. Oh my god. Oh god. You can you can't even take uh, inspiration from games anymore. The moment I feel like when it comes to anime oh sorry. When it comes to anime or any other piece of media, anytime someone pays tribute to your work by you know in any way, shape or form. It's highly praised because you acknowledge that they did a great job. But whenever in gaming that's not the case, whenever you actually try to do something someone else did or to include the like the same mechanics, people react like you were trying to make another Sekiro. How dare you make another Sekiro? Huh? <laughs> okay. Ooh, Mr. Anderson. I like that review. I want to, just because of the name, I'm going to rate it fully, and that's going to be the last review. Mr. Anderson says, Rise of the Ronin is to Neo as Sekiro was to Dark Souls, except where Sekiro succeeded. Oh my. <laughs> Shots fired. Ronin's execution is clunky trash. Oh wow. That person came out swinging. They woke up and chose violence. Jesus. Ooh. It is a flood, a flood clown in every way. Dang, dodging is completely worked as they wanted to force you to use. I don't think so. I don't think so. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't agree. You can actually beat this game without corner sparking. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can because I tried it in multiple occasions when I was at the dojo. I didn't know what to do to get a high score. So sometimes I was just dodging and you can dodge, but the tracking is crazy good. And even if you dodge one attack, you're going to have to dodge multiple times in a row. There is a, like basically the game wasn't made around dodging, but you can still dodge. The I mean, the same would apply to Sekiro. Sekiro wasn't made around dodging. You have some attacks you have to dodge, yes. Sometimes you have to parry, but in, in, even in Sekiro, if you're trying to, for example, dodge, um, and getting Chiro's flurry attack is going to still going to hit you because it tracks, you know. So the same criticism can be made about Sekiro too. 
but I don't see it be made about Sekiro anyway. Dodging is completely blocked as they wanted to force you to use counter sparks like Sekiro, which will be fine if it actually works. It works. It actually works. Shut up. <laughs> Depending on the enemy, you will get a zero second warning to multiple seconds delay. What? You will get a zero second warning. What do you mean by that? Spending hours, hours trying to memorize the patterns just isn't fun with the system. Isn't that the same thing with Sekiro? Spending hours trying to memorize a pattern? What is wrong with people? That you can make a, a criticism like that when it comes to Rise of Ronin when the same applies to Sekiro. You still have to memorize the, the patterns in Sekiro if you want to perform parries. That's, I, th there is no way to beat, like, let's say for example you're trying to go against Ishin, there is no way you're going to beat him if you don't understand exactly how he fights. So why is it okay when it comes to Sekiro but not fine when it comes to Rise of the Ronin? Why? I, I, just, I just don't understand. Anyway, um, depending on the enemy you have a zero second delay, I mean warning to multiple seconds delay. Several. I mean, spending hours, hours trying to memorize a pattern just isn't fun with a system that isn't tight enough to put it off. It is tight enough, trust me. I told her already, until the twin fight, then turn it off and won't be coming back. Oh, such a loss. In this age of gamer, here we go, <laughs> here we go. I don't want to swallow moldy food just because I paid for it. Well, that's kind of dumb. I understand, but that's also dumb. Imagine going to a restaurant, you know, you order the burger, and just because it's not to your liking, you're like, I'm not going to eat. Guess what? You're going to die from starvation. So, jokes on you. But anyway, I understand. They're not going to play a game they don't like. I understand, but it's, again, it's a waste of money. Huh. In this day of. <laughs> I paid for it. Okay, they paid for it. There's too many other games that demand my attention. Oh, God. It's one of those people. <laughs> I feel this game only appeals to a very niche set of players who enjoy putting themselves. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. You can Again, you can bring Sekiro in the discussion and talk about people wanting to prove themselves and only praise one over the other. It's not fair. Poor execution, poor graphics, poor story. Oh, my. Ooh. <laughs> That's gotta hurt. Oh my, at least they gave it a 2 on the 0. And I like that how, I like that they actually tried to develop um, how to actually try to elaborate on how they feel. I like that. Even though I don't agree, I can respect the way they feel even though, again, that's not genuine. You can't talk about Sekiro which share the same mechanics as Rise and only praise one or the other. You still have to get... The whole reason why um, people compare games to Dark Souls and you know Bloodborne and Sekiro is because of the difficulty. And that difficulty comes from having to, to get familiar with a boss mechanics or just trying to understand the pattern. So you can't praise a game for behaving like that and then when, I, when another game is trying to do the same thing you're like hey i don't like that in my video games i have all the games which are which deserve my attention like what i th i think that's so disingenuous i don't i don't that's not fair <laughs> at all so again whenever i buy a game and i i really want to get the full experience because I paid for it. I wasn't gifted the game. I want to pay for it. Unless you have unlimited, I mean, unlimited resources, I feel like you should at least try to get, unless, I mean, if you can get the refund, go for it. But if you can, it's a waste of money. You know, you just give that studio your money and you didn't even get to experience the game. But I can also understand that sometimes you have such a bad experience that you don't want to go any further. I can understand that. I'm not like that. I tend to always play the games I, I I get, you know, unless I really don't like you. And even when I don't like you, I still try to play because, you know, I, I respect the time the devs put into the game. Anyway, I felt the same way at times. I felt like the story was too long and I was just, I just, the game gives you the option to switch from one faction to the next and there are no consequences to doing so, especially you have, you're not punished 
for betrayal, you're not punished for treason. And that's not in, a, in an area, I mean, in a time period where people would commit seppuku just because they talked when it wasn't their turn. I feel like switching, like something as, as huge <laughs> as treason would be punished severely. Like, like come on, like, punish me. But I can understand that the game isn't perfect. But at least the combat, the combat and some other aspect of the game. <laughs> you know what? I'll see you soon. Tell me what you think about the game. And actually, you know what? Rate the game and tell me why you gave it that rating. I'll see you soon. Have a good day or whatever. Bye.